The, you can feel the table with a lot, with a lot of press here, a um, lot of mics. How are you, how are you finding this media venture? Well, it's a bit different than taking to our uh, under 18s when um, we might not quite have the same crowd, so it's a little bit different. Um, but I suppose it's part of the um, part of the role, and I think the important thing as well is that sort of um, role modelling um, for other female coaches, other young girls um, that are growing up, knowing that anything is possible if you work hard enough and opportunities do come along. And Dale, were you expecting this month? <laughs> like I said at the start, I've never I've never been at a press conference like this. I mean, this is mad. Right. When we made the decision, we made it ever so simply based on merit. Club decision, Hannah got off in the job. Uh, I didn't expect this. I knew it was a first in football, but I didn't expect this. Absolutely. And Hannah, will you be sorry? Will, will you be putting your hat in what? Will you remain yeah, into the hat for the main job? <laughs> Well, it's all been, as I say, a little bit of a whirlwind. So, obviously, haven't taken a training session with the players yet. You know, that was the first, um, obviously, performance we've seen from them, having come back from pre-season um, with everything else that's going on. So, um, I think the important thing is we get into training, we start working hard, and then we see how, where things take us. I love working at the club. I love my job, working with the kids. I've got a great um, academy and a group, great group of young players. So, I love what I do, um, but I've been really grateful for the opportunity. Hannah, the, the, the announcer said tonight. I'm the chairman here. Okay, good. Thank you. Hannah, the announcer said tonight there was a moment of, of football history in terms of having a woman in charge of a men's professional team. Have you felt that over the last 24 hours? Um, yeah, a little bit, as you say, the, the attention has, has made that. And I, and I think I want to make it really clear it's great and it's fantastic. But the focus needs to be on the players and you know their preparations, and we are trying to you know we're, we're preparing a football team for a league season, and that's important, and we can't forget that, and we you know that is the priority, and that has to be the priority, and I know this is why we've we've handled this situation like this because they need to be the focus, um, you know we're just there to facilitate and coach them, and hopefully have a really positive start to the League Two campaign. Are you worried? And, and this is about you all getting this out of your systems so that we can get on with football. <laughs> Absolutely. Are you worried it will take it away from the players? Though, the, if you let's say, for example, opening game against Salford, you are you are still in charge as interim or permanent. Are you worried that that will take it away from the players? You'll be bored by then, won't you? Yeah. <laughs> we don't There'll be something else exciting coming along by then, I'm sure. So, and that's what we have to do. We have to make it the norm. We have to make it not yeah, this. It right. has to become. And this is the start of that. Yes. Next question. Just last one. Just we'll, one more. We'll, one more. We'll get one more. Um, make it a good one. It's going to be a great question. Do you see this tonight and moving forward as being a real trailblazer for women in football? Yes, but it shouldn't be. Yes, I agree. <laughs> so it's, it's the like first that. and it's great, but I don't want to be the first, you know, and the only. Um, I think it's slightly disappointing that as the first female academy manager, I'm still really the only female academy manager. And if we want change to happen, we need more females in these positions throughout clubs. And if there's more uh, female coaches in youth football, I know Lydia Bedford has just um, got it at um, Bedford, the under 18s, then these opportunities will happen more and more. Um, because coaches get promoted from youth football um, so the more uh, female coaches we can get in the boys game throughout the academy systems then I think it will happen more naturally yes. Hannah is being a, a trailblazer stay, stay, stay put your hands up please Sorry. Go on. No, it's not a free for all <laughs> okay thanks James <laughs> is being a trailblazer Hannah something that comes naturally to you um, personally, I'm not one for the limelight. <laughs> As I say, for me, I wanted the attention to be on the players, and I think that's my almost my biggest concern in a way is that this is, this isn't a gimmick. This isn't a, about this. This is about those players in that changing room, and this is about them getting the preparation that they need for that campaign. And I would like that nothing takes away from that because if it does, then it's probably the wrong thing to do to put me in this position in the first place because they're the priority and the team are the priority and this isn't a as I say a gimmick oh. this is <clears throat> because we need to do the best things for those footballers and our football club it's a football decision that just happens to shock the world of football do you think that being You're next. having this appointment here at Forest Green means that somebody like Emma Hayes may be more likely to get a job at a Premier League club Emma Hayes is amazing and yes. she's doing an amazing job where she is and obviously <coughs> playing in Champions League with international players and she'd be more than capable of stepping in into any position. Um, we just need more open-minded people to allow these opportunities to happen. Dan, can I ask how the decision came about to dispense with Duncan Ferguson's services? You can ask, but I'm going to say. <laughs> 
And then, was it an easy decision to then move and uh, give the uh, give the role to Hand? Yes, it was. Yeah, I've been saying it all day. Uh, it was a very simple decision and it was the most qualified person at the club for the job. Uh, nothing else came into the frame. Uh, we did know that it would be a first, uh, but that didn't matter. But I didn't know it would be such a big deal, honestly. You're next. What she got to do to get the job? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <I'll> <laughs> win, win the recruitment process. Right? I'm not running the process. Uh, there'll be hundreds of people applying for it. It'll be a proper thing. It'll probably take several weeks. Um, and, and if Hannah wants to put her name into the hat to say the right way around, um, she's very welcome. And um, and we know Hannah; she's been here with you know with us for four years. So you could argue she's got a bit of an inside track, but we'll see what happens. Right? It'll be uh, a very thorough process, and uh, and hopefully we'll get a great person for the job. You've you've been very loyal to managers in the past, hmm. um, but now you're looking for your third one in I think around a year. Is it? Sure. Mm. After well, I know one of the left. I, I think it was three in the first ten years. Yeah, three, mm. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Three in ten years, but now three in. Yeah. Since Rob Edwards left, you've, you've had the inversion rate. I've done the so What do you think's changed to, to make that happen? It was just circumstance. You know, Rob left. Um, <clears throat> We tried to change things up in January to save our season. That didn't work. We weren't far off the pace, really. You know, three points off, I think, the drop zone in January. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's how you learn, isn't it? It's how you learn. So three managers in 10 years and then three in one year. Not the end of the world. <laughs> Next question, please, you. Yeah, Hannah, congratulations on the appointment. In terms of the messages and the reaction to it, did you get any messages from anyone in particular? What did your family say and things like that? Because obviously you've tried to play it down, but this is a big appointment in, in football. Yeah, so as I say, yesterday was quite a stressful day. Um, it's a bit embarrassing but I went home I was sleeping and then suddenly my phone started pinging I was like oh, what's going on here um, with all the messages coming in and it's been you know um, you know I'm really grateful for the support that I've had from obviously friends and family but also um, people you know from the football world obviously Rob Edwards has um, reached out because obviously we worked with him when he was here um, so yeah it's been it, it, it's been really nice to get the level of support that I've had Nice. And you've been at oh, another sorry. one. No, fine. One more, sorry. <laughs> um, and you've been at the club for a few years. I've spoken to you at the club before. And what is it that is so special about it? And and why is it a club like Forest Green that decides to make this trailblazing decision? Well, I think it's. <laughs> So obviously, you know, it's very well documented our views and well, Dale's views. I'm going to speak for you here. Sorry, no, on sustainability, etc. And that's obviously important. But for me, it's bigger than that. It's about values, a values-driven organisation, about say doing the right thing and treating people properly and allowing people to be themselves. Um, I think any of you who've ever been to Forest Green or ever been into the club will know that there's no expert. You don't have to dress a certain way or act a certain way or behave a certain way or be a certain way to feel welcome. Um, Brilliant. in that environment and I think that's the difference I think it's it's just an environment that encourages people to be themselves and that's the way that you're going to get the best out of people and just finally a word <laughs> <laughs> three <laughs> no. yeah, yeah three is true <laughs> sorry um, just finally as well you know I'm, I've spoken to fans today they're incredibly supportive of you but your number one supporter was there when I spoke to him earlier a word on him and then also just a word finally on oh, it's time to embarrass <laughs> No, as I said, I think it's that to be able to create that culture in a, a football club and to be a brave enough to do it differently. Um, as I say, we've all been to different clubs and I would say I don't always feel that comfortable walking into boardrooms at certain clubs, I'm not going to name them, but because just of the environment that's created, it's a little bit more formal, stuffy, potentially, if I, I bear dare say fair. it. <clears throat> and yeah, different. And I think you come to our club and it's different and I think that's down to Dale and his you know his values but the way that he wants people to feel when they walk into the football club mm -hmm. I think that's fair you know and I've been there as well I still am there boardrooms in football clubs can be really stuffy uncomfortable places not least with the dress code right <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but what was the question just a word on Hannah oh you know I, I think I've, I think I've been saying it all day Hannah uh, I've known Hannah for four years she got the, the job to lead our academy on Mirror. I think she's done a great job uh, what she just said about the club is perfect uh, describing her 
her view of how we are as a club is a perfect description of who we are as a club. So when I said earlier that Hannah got our values completely as a club, she just proved it to me. And I just want to say this, I keep having these moments of feeling I'm in like an episode of Ted Lasso. <laughs> 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 uh, did you have any hesitation in, in stepping up when, when Dale asked you? Uh, not at all. Um, you know, again, I've grown and developed my time at the football club um, and it was an opportunity that I felt I was ready to take. Um, and again, I've spoken to, you know, to Dale and um, about that. Um, and obviously when this opportunity came up, he was fully aware of where I felt, you know, I might be able to step in at that point. Um, so, yeah, felt ready to go and do it. Um what about tonight's game? What, what are your thoughts about tonight's game and your team's performance? Um, I think it was it's it's, frustr it's difficult. <laughs> uh, first game, obviously pre season two forty fives, a lot of trialists, a lot of young players, um, but I was really pleased to see it with certain players, and I think the way that they've um, taken to the new um, to the changes, I suppose, if you're going to put it that way. Um, I think you're starting to see, particularly in the first half, some real sort of roots of those combination plays in midfield. You know, things that didn't quite come off. I mean, excuses, the grass a little bit long, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you're seeing those little bits, and we haven't done any. Well, I haven't done any training with them, so um, I was really pleased that just off, obviously, the the, the, the conversations we had pre-game that they've gone and put some of those performances on like that. Nobody at the back want to ask a question? Yes. Hannah, I know you didn't necessarily want to be the first or, or trailblazer as such, but how surreal is it when people are sort of queuing up for autographs and photos and stuff at the end? Yeah, yeah, it's lovely. And so what's nice with that, though, the obviously the young the young people are waiting for things to be signed, etc. and how many girls there are down there. Um, you know, and that's, again... <laughs> We want to diversify the crowd at Forest Green, encourage more women and girls to come and watch the men's team and the women's team. Um, so actually, you know, seeing so many young girls there, and Melksham fans or Melksham playing for Melksham by the looks of it in their tracksuit top, it's fantastic um, because hopefully they're more inspiring um, young girls, whether it's in football or in any industry that, you know, that there aren't these glass ceilings and if they are, you just got to break through them. Yes. Anyone else in the back? Oh, yeah, good. Uh, obviously, you've been working with the academy before. Is it... Is it in, in a way that you're out of your comfort zone dealing with professional male players who are older than the people, or is it, or is it just as easy? football's football mm. you know there's 22 players on the pitch a ball and two goals and we're trying to <laughs> score more goals than them and um, you know so that doesn't change and I think they're people and I think as, again they're, they're football players but they are people and people again if you treat them respectfully um, talk to them like adults which is exactly this way that we, t we, we deal with the 16 and 17 year olds they might not be quite as mature to take some of those messages on but it's very similar mm. and, and would you be She's been asked that question already, by the way. Will you be like? Currently, uh, as I say, day one. <laughs> I haven't taken a training session, so at the minute, I'm enjoying the opportunity. Uh, as I say, working with a really fantastic group of players. We've got a, an excellent, a really good group of professionals down in those dressing rooms, um, and I'm really enjoying the experience. And post that, wherever we will be. Yeah, just, uh, if I, if I there was there was some there was a, a column that written um, in the newspaper today which was saying it's like a publicity stunt. Oh, it was the Telegraph. It was. Yes. So, <laughs> that's kind. Uh, uh, yes, I am. Yeah. <laughs> but, but is it? I mean, as a more general thing, is it, is it positive to bring the publicity around the subject to create a conversation, whether whether Hannah gets the job or not? No, no, I think it is incredibly so. Do you remember the headline of that of that column? No, never mind. Uh, then I won't have a pop at the owners who've just had the Telegraph taken from them, the tax exile billionaires that have just lost the Telegraph to their banks. Uh, so I won't do that. <laughs> um, actually, I, I do think it's fantastic, actually, um, that uh, all, all of this attention tells me what a really big thing we've done. And it's not... It's not accidental because we were conscious of it. It's incidental. It's incidental to the football decision that we made. And this has happened. And out there in the world, off the back of all of the news reports that you guys will file, girls and women in football, in other sports, in non-sports, will be thinking, hell, you know, are there actually any limits? As Hannah says, let's go break through the glass ceiling. Glass ceiling.
first. I think it's a great thing. Uh, there's one at the back, and there's you. Uh, you were first. And, uh, I mean, as stupid as it might sound you know, in this day and age, there, will, there would be skepticism if you, if you got the job permanently. I mean, it feels like a a female manager of a men's football team will always be starting from a point that is so much unfairly, you know, further back than a men's coach. I and mean, how, how hard would that be to deal with the scepticism of fans and, and even players maybe? Um, again, obviously the views of the fans are important, but for me it's the players. And I haven't just rocked up today and decided to coach a men's team, by the way. <laughs> but, you know, um, I've you know, coached men's non-league football, I've coached in the academy, I've coached men for 20 odd years. So this isn't different for me. Um, and the players, I tell you, never have a problem with the player because the players know as soon as you step on the grass, that if you know what you're doing, you know what you're talking about, they just want good coaching. They just want good information. They just want a good program. They just want to be prepared well for the start of the season in August. That's what they want. So it shouldn't matter who's doesn't matter who's taking them. The perception is everybody on the outside yes. on what it should look like. But in the environment, I don't think there's an issue at all. No, I agree with you, and I think it's a mistake to say never, right? Because the world changes around us all of the time. When we rescued Forest Green 12 years ago, everybody in football said the environment doesn't belong in football. Talk to a football club now in the top four flights and lower that's not focused on their environment impact. You won't find one. Right. Stuff changes. This is the beginning of a change. That's what I believe. Uh, um, two things, if I may. Can you give us a little insight into into what it was like when you when you did address the players? I mean, I know mean, you say it's not an alien territory for you, but you know, how did they react? Did anyone say anything in particular? And, and also beyond that, can you give us a little idea of how you fell in love with football, what it was, and uh, did you ever think at that time that this was possible? Yeah, so um, it's going to sound a bit mean, but the players don't have a choice. <laughs> 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 They're professional footballers yes. at a professional football club who in a month's time are starting the League Two season. So somebody's been put in, in, in charge of the group and their responsibility is to train properly prepare themselves for that start of the season so you know we spoke to them we talked about obviously a lot of change has happened in terms of Duncan leaving and it provides a fresh start for some players and um, some players obviously might be more disappointed some will be you know will be quite might, might be more pleased that might not have been in favour as much so it's a new start for everybody and a blank slate for everybody to have an opportunity so um, no issues with the players I think we've seen the fun the players this evening we just got on with it because that's their job um, okay. what I've fell in love with football so God, um, growing up again uh, older brother <laughs> playing football in the park as it were all those sorts of things um, the, again it's quite sad that I say this story quite a lot because um, a lot of women in my of my generation and we even look at some of the lionesses tell similar stories that there weren't the opportunities to play um, that there are now and that's fantastic that the, the girls have the opportunities they have now so I quite quickly went into coaching um, and as I say um, whilst I was still playing I would coach non-league non men's football so I tell you that's nothing those group of professionals are nothing to walking into a non-league dressing room at Gresley Rovers or Shepshire Dynamo or Leicester Nirvana with a load of blokes who've been working all week and you know, come for a couple of training sessions a week and then a game on a Saturday. So, um, but you love it. You love the buzz um, of the Saturday afternoon and, and the three points. And um, yeah, fell in love with the game. Nice one. Where were we now? Up at the back, anybody? We're running out of questions. Come on. Yeah, I was going to say we're running out of time too. <laughs> <laughs> I promise Anna it wouldn't be too long. Yeah, that's pretty Anna, good. I think, I think in the, we did an interview a couple of years ago, didn't we? And you were telling me about you, you know um, obviously unconscious biases um, that you've had to obviously deal with in the past. But once you got over that and people actually heard what you spoke about, you know your ideas, everyone was very accepting. Can you just give us a bit of insight into that? Just let everyone know. Well, this will help because I hope that no one now is going to call me a physio. So that's always helpful. <laughs> um, <laughs> but as I say, you know, often it's not, you know, it's no malice involved, but um, traditionally, um, certainly when I've been in the academy teams, a female who comes to the team is often a part of the medical team, etc. Um, which at times I've found quite frustrating. Um, but the only way to change that bias is to change what they see. You can't be what you can't see, right? So again, you know, you go back to 
young girls, women on the coaching journey seeing this, um, hopefully we'll see that there are opportunities um, and there are open-minded people and open-minded environments that, you know, a female coach can go and thrive in. Cool. Last chance, last orders. Listen, thanks guys, it's been fantastic. Loving the attention. Um, go out there and spread the word. <laughs> Can we just get a picture of you and Hannah together with the show? So if you stand up, because I'm going to lose all the microphones. It's quite tight in here, so don't want to just be fine, aren't they? Oh, just in? Yeah. yeah. Just hold the shirt between you. Yeah, cool. Oh, so you want the shirt here? Yeah. 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 You want to hold the shirt? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I didn't say that, did you? <laughs> Uh, Poured uh, Melksham. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they've been good to us. That's lovely. Look the spider in, please, Anna. That's lovely. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah. That's lovely. Thank you. Yeah, did you look this way as well? Yeah. <laughs> this way. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. 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 Th